Hey, today I'm going to show you two things. One, how to build a chart using the new SwiftUI charts library like this. And second, how to use that SwiftUI view in your UIKit project. That way, it doesn't matter whether you have a SwiftUI project or a UIKit project. This video is going to help you to build a chart and use it in your project. Let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do is, is import Snapkit as a dependency because I am lazy when it comes to auto layout and Snapkit makes your life so much easier. Once we have this as a dependency, we use Snapkit here. All we need to do is in here, I like to create a function that sets up our view. So set up view. This is where we're going to have our view that we add as a sub view. This is going to be our switch UI view and lay it out. Uh, so just as a preparation here already, and then calling it setup view from the view did load, did load uh, hook. All right, let's create a new file, new file here and call it, let's say savings history. Savings history, because we want to save money. We want to see it on a chart if we are saving properly and how much that is. We're going to implement uh, import Swift UI and the charts library and also foundation because we're dealing with dates. Uh, so it's a savings history view, right? So I guess I will just call it like this is a view and then nothing special here, just simple Swift UI body returns some kind of view. And then here, let's just silence the first warning that we're going to get with a text view. Okay, cool. So the chart view looks like this. It, it is uh, expecting a list of data points of any kind of thing that is identifiable. So what we want to do is we want to pass into the chart a, an array. And so let's define an array here. Let's say our list is an array of some kind of model. You most likely will have some kind of model in your, in your project that will hold the data points that you want to have on a chart. So let's just say savings model here, and it will have an amount, how much we saved as a double and has a date. That's the date when we saved that amount or how much we have it, uh, we have saved at that time. It's of type date. So then we can say savings model. Let's just create some mock data here. Savings model amount is going to be 101 at the beginning. Oh, so date, date should be not the same day every for every mock data, right? We don't want to have seven data points on the same date. It's going to be just in one place on a chart. We want to have like, I don't know, 23rd of November up until today. So let's deal with that really quick. We can deal with that by let's create a static var static var of type formatter. That's gonna deal. Yeah, let's gonna have it be date formatter. And then return well, let's create a date formatter first date formatter, new instance of date formatter return a dot date formatter at the end of this function. We want to say date formatter has, we can create, how do we accomplish that we have days from seven days ago up until now? We can use strings. We can, you know, pass in a string of a certain format and create date instances of it. And we're, we're going to use date formatter to do that. What kind of string, uh, string format are we going to use? Well, we're going to just use a, days, month, and then years uh, format. So that means we can say date formatter dot date from string. And then we're saying the 23rd of November, 2022. But since that one is returning an optional date, let's pass in a uh, instance of date if that one fails, which will never happen. Uh, but just to silence the optional warning and we don't have to force unwrap, you can deal with deal with it differently. Obviously you're going to, but for the sake of the tutorial, we want to get to a point, right? So let's do seven data points here. We can say 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, eight and nine. Awesome. Then the value should be different too, because we don't want a straight line. We actually want, if we save money, a line that goes up. So then let's say we saved $10 in a day. We saved some, well, like a little bit more than $10 in a day after that. Uh, and let's just fill out that one. 
Why am I always going into thousands? 55 and then one, um, let's say 75. Cool. Now we can pass in that list. It will iterate through it. And then we're going to have for every single instance, the model in here, and we can start using it. Now it's going to complain. The savings model has to conform to identifiable. Okay. Let's fix that by conform to identifiable and identifiable identifiable requires you to have a property that is ID and we can just use UUID or you can have your kind of ID that you want to have. In my projects, I have a database ID that I use and that satisfies the error here. Now, what we want to do is tell the chart how it should plot the data. Is it gonna be a line, an area, a point? Well, and all of that are marks basically. So we're going to do a line mark and then X and Y. So you're gonna use dot value and then you can say, oh, okay, the X value is going to have the label month and the value is going to be from sing saving model on the X axis is going to be the created at date, right? It's the date that you want to pass in. And on the Y axis, you're going to have the value and just give it the label, I guess, dollar. You're not gonna see it. And then you say uh, savings model dot amount. So for the first date, 23rd of November, have the value 101. For the second day, uh, 24th, have the value 111 and so on and draw the line. And that's what, the, what it's gonna do. And then we're gonna give it a foreground color. Foreground color style be red. So that's, that's all we need for now. We can delete that text thing here. We're going to opt optimize it because uh, you're gonna see some kind of things that you want to control. But for now, let's set up this view in our UI kit project, shall we? So all we need is a UI hosting controller and then pass in our Swift UI view and that's our savings history, an instance of that. That's it. Now the magic has happened in the background and you can access the controller, which has a view property. Oh, we need to import Swift UI because uh, UI hosting controller is a Swift UI class. And now you can see you can have UI, a UI view that is basically your chart. Um, and so since status, you can see there is a force unwrap, right? Or for, force declaration here that it's optional. So what you can do is you can just use a guard let really quick here and say savings view is equal to that view. And if it doesn't work out, let's return early. And now you're not dealing with optional down here anymore and say, say savings view. Cool. It's a UI view. I mean, UI could land. That's all I wanted. So let's add it as a UI, as a sub view. It's our savings view and then lay it out. So savings view, how do I, where do I want to position it? I'm going to use oh, snap kit. So let's import that really quick. Import snap kit. Cool. Uh, let's do snap, make constraints. And then I'm gonna center it on the Y axis equal to its super view of this controls view basically. And then I'm gonna say leading is going to be equal to super view, but within a little bit of an offset of 15. I'm gonna say trailing is basically the same is equal to super view, but with a little bit of an inset of 15. So we have a little bit of spacing. And then the height is going to be equal to a value of say 500 and that's it. I'm gonna set up the view and then let's run the app and see what happens. There we go. We got a chart, we got a line, and it has our dates. But as you will notice, we only have three entries here. And why is that? But we, we're, we're jumping from 23rd to 25th. That is because the chart knows that you're using date as a type. And it just basically, you know, just, <laughs> it just does a stretch. You still have your points here, right? That's still your 24th, and then you have your 25th, but you don't see it down here. What if you want to see it? right? Well, then, then just pa don't pass in date, but pass in a string instead. So for example, what you can do is, uh, right, we're passing in a date here. Let's just declare a function that handles um, converting that date into a string that looks exactly how we want it to look. For example, it should look like, um, I don't know, 23rd of November, like this. So then let's say format date, and then we're expecting a date, date, and then it returns a string. And that way it will it will show you every single entry on the X axis. With that, it's just four lines of code. You, you get your current cal calendar, calendar current, 
you get the date components components is calendar date components and then you're gonna say date components from and then what kind of components you want from the date that's gonna be day and month because that's the only two things we want here we can also do another you know year but you know you do as you want and then we're gonna pass in the date that we get passed into this function now you're gonna say guard let no let's get these things guard let date uh, day equals date components get me the day it's it's optional as you can see optionally in that's why we need the guard let and then also let, let's grab the month from date components month else and then if that fails you know let's just return a dash that's never gonna happen but then you see immediately on a chart why uh what's happening and then let's return um say day right it's 23rd and the month like this and then whenever you're using this as a value just say format date pass in like that let's rerun the app and see if that helps awesome now we see 23rd 24th 25th and we see every single value on the x axis so this is trailing, right? Y axis. We can put this on the on the front as well by just saying, oh, on the chart, let's say chart Y axis, because that's what we want to manipulate right now. And then you say axis marks is going to be the position of it leading. That's it. Now you're basically moving the Y axis on the left side, on the leading side. You have it on the left side. That looks much better. So you see it's not rounded here, right? So what if you want to have it, you know, be rounded and fluid? All you need to do is on the line mark, because that's your, you know, uh, line, you want the interpolation between the two points to be cardinal. Cardinal. So one from one point to another is cardinal and it's gonna be like a fluid rounded line. Looks much nicer like this. Okay, done. You got your line chart using dates and values. Uh, so, how about adding another layer? So the thing is, we're basically doing like another mark, like a point mark that is not related to the line mark at all. Like these marks are all not related. You can do a point mark and then again, pass in these values and then you get your points on your chart and they are not related to the line mark. But if you use the same data, it's gonna be just on top of the line and with that, the combination of it will look nice. So let's do that really quick and see how it looks. So we go, we're gonna say X axis is just basically the same thing. Foreground is gonna be white. See, point mark, we're adding another layer for the chart with points and the points are gonna be on the X axis of the date, exactly where the value is of the amount. And hmm, previously we drew a line and now we're putting points on top. And so you're gonna see white points on top of your line. Awesome. You can manipulate your uh, the size, the symbol size, basically, of your point, symbol size, and then just say, oh, I want it to be five. So it's not, you know, so it's not this thick and big, but small and light. And so you can just beautify your chart a little bit, see? And then it's the same thing with the area mark. There's a small catch with that, I will show you. But it's the same thing. We're done with point mark. It's let's just add another layer. How about we add a, an area to it, right? And then define from where to where the area goes and from you know the values between them. So we're gonna add an area mark. And then you want to use X and then Y start and Y end. Because you want to say on the X axis where the dates are, you want to start the area at the value and end it at your um, charts you know, beginning, it's zero for us here, uh, right? Because we start at zero and then we go all the way to 175. So you're gonna use that and you're gonna basically say for X, it's gonna be value, X is month. And then again, format, I'm gonna correct that later in a second. Savings model dot created at month. And then Y start, it's gonna be value, and then you're gonna say uh, dollar, that's your, it starts from top and goes to bottom, that's important. So savings model dot amount, 
let's format it whoops so we can read it better like this and then y end is going to be value and then just call it i don't know min value and then say zero and then and then we are ignoring the series and now if we look at the chart we see that the area is not there because we give we didn't give it a color actually let's just uh oh it is blue by default okay cool but you can see that uh it overlays the line since it's another layer it doesn't have the cardinal uh, interpolation so let's just uh, interpolation dot cardinal fix that really quick very cool now it's also cardinal and you have your uh, layer right there. You can put it, I think, probably even uh, at first, so it's behind the line in case you know you're overlapping the line a little bit. Uh, it's up to you, really. But now you know how to put the area and another layer and another layer, and you know create your nice chart. See, it was overlay overlaying it a little bit because it's different layers. All right, I think this should be helpful. And if that's the case, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps out a ton. If you have any questions, don't hesitate leaving them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer them or even create a new video where I'm answering it, showing you the code. And until then, see you next time.